So with that song, the bridge said, when I melt into whatever I'm resisting, I can feel it open up my heart. So put your hand over your heart right now. And I ask this question of you. What is it that you need to lean into? What is it that you're resisting? What is making your stomach be in a knot? And you're thinking, if I can just make it through this. So here's what I want to talk to you about today, my dear friends, is that the key when things are rocky and things are upsetting you, you know that expression, whatever you resist persists. I mean, look at when you're like this, it's like, what are you doing? It's just like you're making it so much harder. And truly one of the, one of the, uh, one of the ideas in that song was it was enlightening for me to figure out to, to finally understand that when I, when I kept resisting, it was making it harder. But when I leaned into it, when I opened my heart to it, when I started to investigate what was happening for me, that's when I could feel freedom and that's when I could move through it. And that's what we're really looking at here today, isn't it? We're looking at freedom. We're looking at how do we be free when we're going through, you know, and things are hard when things are going hard for us. It's things right now are really hard. I don't want to affirm that, but it's just, it's been an interesting time, hasn't it? So what I've been really working on in my own life is just how do I release into the idea of, okay, this is what's happening and I'm going to lean into it. So, but here's the thing. When you think about, you know, lean into it, really? Do I really want to do that? Why? It goes against everything that we feel. It's like, I don't want to go through more pain. That just doesn't feel fun. But that's the question, isn't it? That's the question. It's your choice. It's your choice of what you want to do. And there are going to be, there's times when you just might want to just go, can't deal with it. Don't want to lean in. Thanks, Karen, for your little advice. Really appreciate it, but I don't think so. And you know, I have a song. Um, I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. And you know, the, the bridge to that song says, I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go. So even as I'm talking about everything I'm going to say today, I want to have that be the undercurrent that, you know, there are going to be times when you're just saying, I just need to curl up in a ball and eat bonbons on the couch. And you know what? That's fine. That's fine. But I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me feels safe to go really comes down to this feeling of, you know, is it, is it time to heal this part of me? Is it time to heal this? Is it getting so rocky in my world that I need to delve in and look at what's going on? So here's what I know. Here's the main thing that I know is I will have joy. I will have joy if I allow myself to feel the pain. So in other words, if I keep myself at this place of just going, I'm not going to feel anything, la, 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 la. <laughs> my life kind of goes like this. But when I allow myself to feel whatever is going on for me and to tell the truth about it, that's when I can feel the whole gamut of emotions. I can feel the pain. I can feel the joy. But I can move through that pain faster. And, you know, let's face it, pain gets our attention. You know, and I really think that here's a little thought that I want to give to you, a little seed I want to plant, is that when you get triggered by something, when you have pain about something, that it is a way for you to reframe that, to really look at, look at it as, oh, how interesting, the universe or spirit or my higher self or whatever you want to call it is getting my attention to show me that it's time to make a change. You might not be, again, you might not be ready to do it now, but it's planting the seed. So I'm going to tell you a few stories about this in a moment. But I just want to just really plant that seed about that when changes are happening, when the road gets rocky, it's not always a bad thing. 
It could be leading you to a whole new direction that you had no idea about. But, but you know, have you ever seen how in cement, when there's a crack in the cement and one little teeny piece of grass comes up, that's what this is all about. I believe that that grass is coming up because it's, it's spirit saying, grow, express, be who you are. And that's what's happening with us. When there's a crack in our perfect little world and something shifts, it actually allows us to delve more into the meaning of what's going on if we don't run away from it. So pain pushes till we surrender and then healing can happen. Not something. I love this quote from David White. Disappointment is a friend to transformation. I'll say that again. Disappointment is a friend to transformation. I mean, sometimes when you get disappointed by something, it, again, it just, it can lead you to this place where you had no idea. I love um, the movie. Did you ever see the movie Inside Out? I love this movie. It's one of my favorite movies. And what I loved about it was how the little character that was called Joy, that expresses joy, at the end of the movie takes, I don't want to give something away. It's all right, I think if I say this. At the end of the movie takes the character who's, who is sadness and says, you know, we have to work together. We have to be in tandem because they were always kind of avoiding each other. And Joy was always just kind of like not wanting to, to talk to sadness, like go away, just go in a corner. But you need both of those. You need both of those to have a rich, fulfilling life. So I love this. I love this quote too. Joy and pain, they are but two arteries of the one heart that pumps through all of those who don't numb themselves to really living. Isn't that great? I'll say that again. Joy and pain, they are but two arteries of the one heart that pumps through all of those who don't numb, who does that, I can numb myself at times, who don't numb themselves to really living. So we have a choice. We have a choice if, if we want to, you know, look at the pain or run away from it. But I love this uh, little acronym I found, S-A-I-N, SANE. And SANE goes like this, stop. Stop to listen and hear what your heart is saying. Stop to notice what you're feeling when you get triggered. A, allow, allow all the emotions to come up, to explore those emotions. Now, you don't have to build a condo and invite people over for appetizers and like live there forever. You could just have those emotions come up and explore them. I, investigate, examine without judgment. Examine these emotions that are coming up without judgment. So, you know, sometimes you know how you can have a knot in your stomach? That's what I'm talking about. That you get those little little inklings of just things aren't really going, you know, you get triggered and, and your body will show that to you. And, and non-identification, you don't have to be attached to the feeling. You could just notice it. So in other words, you don't have to say, I am anger. You could just say, wow, you know, I'm noticing anger right now. I'm noticing these different emotions coming up. But when I talk about leaning into discomfort, which is, you know, opposite of what we want to usually do. Um, I'm talking about when you can breathe into something, when you breathe into it. So I'm going to give you a great example. So one of the things that I love to do, kind of a weird thing, is um, I swim in the San Francisco Bay. I'm a long distance marathon swimmer. And I love doing this. It's like actually one of my most spiritual things that I do. It's kind of weird. But what's really interesting is watching how everyone gets into the water. Now, this water is really cold, got to say. And you see all these different people doing it in all these different ways. And I look at this and think this is exactly how we deal with our own discomfort in our lives. So there's, there's the person that goes back and forth. They just keep walking back and forth and looking at the water and thinking it's going to change if they walk back and forth really fast and keep looking at it. Then there's this one gal that I, I love this. I, I'll get into the water. And she will, you know, she'll just be starting and she'll put her feet in. Then it goes up to her th knees. Then it goes up to her thighs. Then it goes up to, you know, like halfway up. And she'll do this for like 20 minutes. It'll take her forever to get in the water. 
And then there are people like me who just go, oh, you know, and I swear like a sailor and I just dive in. But one of the things I've noticed about this little process is that you hit this wall of cold water. And it's just like what I'm talking about here, that the way that you move through it is you, you don't, the way, well, I don't want to say you don't, the way I move through it is I breathe into it. I just breathe into it and I allow myself, it sounds kind of weird, to become one with the cold. I just, I don't, I don't identify with it. I just say, oh, look, it's cold. Oh, wow, feel this. And I do it in this really gentle way, but I'm breathing the whole time. And then about 30 seconds in, my body adjusts and it's nirvana. I just can swim for 30 minutes and it just feels fabulous. But it's looking at how can you move through these different places in your life when they cause you pain or when you have resistance. Um, you know, what I said before about the idea of looking at or feeling into what your body is saying. So years ago, I was music director of a church and I loved this job, but I kept getting signs from the universe that it was time to move on. And I didn't want to see it. La, 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 la. Did not want to see it because I was very happy in this job. I was making money. I had my little church, my little congregation that knew my songs and the idea of doing anything outside of that church. It was like I couldn't even see it. But I had a friend who planted the seed in me and said, what would happen if you actually started to get your music out to a bigger audience? And I, of course, argued for my limitations and said, well, who else but my little group of 30 people are going to like to hear my music? They're not. No one else is going to want to hear it. And I'm arguing and arguing. And he just keeps saying, I see a bigger vision for you of traveling and doing retreats and whatever. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to go there. So again, I will be gentle with myself. I allowed myself to take time, but the seed got planted. And what happened is that the seed kept getting watered. And I want you to look at this in your own life about how you could have something, whether it's a relationship or a job or, you know, wanting to get in better shape or, you know, get more healthy, whatever it is. Something will happen. The universe will somehow give you a little indication of something and the seed gets planted. And when I say it gets watered, it's like in this case, I kept having the universe drop books in my lap or people, you know, I mean, I remember I was, I was selling my CDs one day and someone came up and said, well, where's your book? Did you already sell out of your book? And I'm like, I don't have a book. What are you talking about? And this happened four or five times within the course of a few days that people kept asking me about my book. And so I kept getting messages from the universe that, it, that there was something bigger for me. And again, I loved my church. It was like, I was fine. But what started to happen was I started to get little knots in my stomach. Have you ever had that? Where someone would say something, or I'd get a little pissy at something at church, something wouldn't go right. And I kept noticing that the universe was giving me evidence and saying, whenever you're ready, we're just going to keep showing you and showing you. And I call it stacking pebbles. That you imagine that there's like a, <laughs> there's like a, a glass sheet. And every time someone says something good, like, you know, where's your book or whatever, it's something that is, you know, adding to that vision, a little pebble gets stacked. Or if something gets you a little pissy, another pebble gets stacked. And all of a sudden, one day, <laughs> the glass breaks and you know it's time. Now, ideally, it would be great if we could listen and be a little clearer sometimes before, in my case, it had to be a spiritual two by four, meaning I was set to perform out of town or something. I think I had one of my first away gigs from this church. And I slipped and fell and hurt my knee. And I, I literally couldn't walk. And I remember sitting out on my little patio looking at the trees because I couldn't move. And now I had three days back that I was supposed to be away. All of a sudden I have three days that I can't go anywhere. I have nothing on my calendar. And I literally heard a voice say, oh, good. Now we can talk. Now I can, now I can talk to you. 
And in that time, I could hear that voice of spirit saying, okay, little girl, just like this sweet little message of like, it's time. And on that day is when I called my minister and said, you know, I, I need to tell you what's going on. And I gave them plenty of notice, but the point was I made that action. It was time to go. And I'll tell you on the day that I left that church, when I left that church job, I, all I could see was fear that like, how am I going to make a living now? Who else is going to listen to my music? What's going to happen? But my wonderful minister, Reverend Carol Huntley, uh, did this beautiful ritual with me and, and the congregation. And I remember she, she created a circle. And I was in the middle of the circle with my little piano and I was singing a song. And at the end of the song, she then turned to the congregation and she said, will you allow Karen to go on to her next expression of, of herself? You know, would you, her next expression of, of who she's supposed to be. And the whole congregation says, yes, we will. And then she turned to me and she put her hand out and she said, and now Karen, are you willing to go to that next expression of who you're supposed to be? And I remember just like, oh, even right now I can feel the emotion. <laughs> wow. I was freaked out. And I remember taking her hand and all I had to do was walk over this, this circle of sheet music that she had created. I felt like I was stepping over the Grand Canyon. But I took her hand and I said, yes. And I walked over that little pile of sheet music and onto this next place that was going to be my new life. And I remember coming home that day and my whole body felt like I had run a marathon and it showed me how much I was holding on. But that's what, that's what I want to make the point of here today with you is that when you lean into what it is it's you're supposed to do, the universe has your back. You'll be supported, but you have to allow yourself to in your own time, to say, yes, I am here, use me. And from that, I left that job and wound up being a traveling musician and traveling all over the country and starting to do talks and retreats and everything. But it started, it started with that seed that started with that seed of being uncomfortable, but leaning into what were the emotions around that? What was I so scared of? And I had to just move through it. And I did. Took some time. I also don't want to minimize this and just say, oh, when you, when you realize it just by the next day, just go do it. It's not like that. You have to allow yourself time to process. But to just be able to be telling the truth to yourself of what is, what is yours to do. Um, I love this by Louisa May Alcott, I am not afraid of storms for I am learning how to sail my ship. So I even talk about right now what's going on in the world with COVID, with, with all that we're all going through and some of us feeling um, pressure about we're supposed to be back and being normal and, and going back to work or doing, or in my case, traveling again. You know, and I think it's really important to um, lean into what your real feelings are, even if they're mixed, that you lean into the unknown, you lean into, um, you know, whatever the, the, the judgments you might have about going back to work, the judgments you might have about people being vaccinated or unvaccinated, the judgments we might have, um, of, you know, guilt or shame or, you know, anything like that. It's just in going back to that S-A-I-N little acronym, investigate, investigate what it is, what it is that you're feeling at that moment. And it's being open to the possibilities of what, what it's all about. Open to your vulnerability of being it just, I'm scared. I'm scared of what all of this is about with COVID and you know, what's happening. But to me, when I open myself up to that place of not knowing and just saying, all right, spirit, I'm here. Use me in whatever way you can. I am open to the possibilities. So I'm gonna leave you with this little song. I am 
open. Actually, do it in this key. I am open to the possibilities. I am open to the possibilities of a life that is meant to be lived by me. So here's my question. When you lean in to whatever's going on in your life right now, what possibilities might be there for you? So just put your hand over your heart and just look at if there's some kind of tightness. What is it that you need to lean into? It could be a forgiveness of someone that when you forgive them, it could open up all this space in your mind and in your heart. It could be leaning into the self-judgments you have and letting those go. I am open to the possibility I am open to the possibility sing it with me now of a life that is meant that is meant to be lived to be lived by me so right now I claim that leaning in just brings me more options. That leaning in allows me to work through whatever it is that's in my way. You know, it's a little bit like you see a, a garden hose. If you put your foot on it, all that water gets backed up. But right now, we're taking our foot off that garden hose and letting spirit flow through us. And when we do that, we can know that we can handle anything. We stand in our power knowing that no matter what happens, what's going on in the world, in the bigger world, and in my, and just in my world, with my friends, with my family, that I can handle it. That I trust my heart, I lean in, ask questions, investigate, feel the feelings, knowing that I am so much bigger than these feelings, that I can move through it, get to that side of freedom, of aliveness, of joy. I am open to the possibility. Yeah. I am open to the possibility. Say that line with me now, of a life, of a life that is meant, that is meant to be lived by me. So with that, we lean in, we breathe, we let go, and we surrender. We surrender to our highest good that knows the truth about our being. We surrender. So with that, we just say thank you for all of the different situations that come to me, <laughs> come to us, growth opportunities. But we can handle it, and we can learn, and we can grow. We are open. We are open. And we say thank you, God, and so it is. Thanks for listening.